Our next question is around envir environmental justice. Environmental justice embraces the principle that all people and communities are entitled to equal protection of environmental and public health laws and regulations, regardless of income, race, color, or national origin. However, what we see in Canada is environmental injustice where there are still long-term boil water advisories across First Nation communities, communities whose life expectancy is worse than that of third world countries. In Ontario, Grassy Narrows, an Indigenous community poisoned by mercury dumping, is still waiting for environmental cleanup and justice. Further changes in the Canadian climate will most greatly impact seniors, children, women, and those living in poverty. And so the question, how will your party address environmental injustices such as, as these so that the most vulnerable Canadians are not disproportionately burdened? Um, the group that is most affected by environmental disasters is always the Indigenous people and are downstream. They represent 5% of our population and they fight for 80% of the protection efforts that are made around the world for our clean water, for our land and our space and we keep dumping stuff into their space every time. Grassy Narrows needs a medical center to help them with their, their uh, issues with the mercury poisoning they're experiencing that needs to be built today and funded with doctors today. Attawampuscat was promised a recreational facility because there's nothing for them to do up there four years ago and they were promised it again just recently. These promises are not being fulfilled and these people are struggling, vulnerable, disproportionately affected um, by our pollution and we just dump it into their space and expect them to take it and that's not uh, fair. We need to end drinking water and boil water advisories by investing and upgrading critical infrastructure to ensure safe water access in every community. We need an indigenous ombudsman for health. The Grassy Narrows community, I thought about this for years in my class, embarrassingly for years. The doctors were being ignored, they were showing up, they were showing signs. It takes forever for them to argue their case. They need to have massive numbers of cancer before anyone starts listening. We have to solve these problems. Downstream of the tar sands is another big issue. All of these things are easily dealt with ahead of time. We don't have to wait until people are struggling and dying and getting cancer and poisoning. It's wrong. Thank you. I mostly have to take exception uh, to the word incorporating uh, First Nations into the plan. That does not sound like free and prior consent, as is stated in the UNDRIP, which is the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, pushing pipelines through their properties without asking for treaties, and dealing with their meeting in a fair and and nation-to-nation -nation way is not how you uh, meet and work with First Nations people. It's not, um, as well as um, Andrew Shear's comments recently about we will work with those, we will work with the ones that will work with us on, on projects, but you have to have that consent every single time. We have to learn our colonial past it is wrong and you can't just force, you can't incorporate. It will take us years to solve the Indian Act and work through a nation-to-nation -nation building process. It will take, we've committed to 10 years, but it will take a very long time with lots of work to do that. Incorporating is um, condescending, and that is not how you need to have nation-to-nation -nation relations. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. Click below for more content. Hashtag Green Party Marty. Send in your comments, like it, share with your friends. We need everybody to know that we can win in this riding. We are listening to you.